the one that brought this tape to us. His name was Sweet Medicine. He's the man that we talked to in the spirit. And he's still around. It was just like Jesus came to that, the Bible. Once you see what you was faced with, you had to cross over. And a lot of it become easy because you uh, give in to it. In less than 50 years, the Cheyenne and the Arapaho sold 4 million acres of their land but nobody got rich. Congress passed two bills just before statehood, which allowed for the sale of Indian property at a time when many Indians did not know what a deed looked like. But since farming went against centuries of their tradition, they sold. I guess they did survive pretty good on uh, their farms for a while, but oh, they come in with this uh, mate work program He'd encourage the Indian that he could make money without staying on the farm. When this uh, work program ceased, a lot of them had sold their allotments, their homes, so they were left. They just quit. I wished I had stayed on the farm. We had land, wasn't taxed. We could have made good living, my knowledge make money, but we could have made good living. I told my mother that I heard of a place in Newton, Kansas, just where in Newton, Kansas, that they was hiring some farm labor. Well, my mother said, you want to be careful when you get over there. Be sure and do what that man tells you to do. I had already picked up this uh, German language here at home. And when I went up in Newton, Kansas over there, why, and on the corner of the street there by a drugstore, one of those German boys was talking German to the other German boy. But I wonder if this Indian is looking for a job. This other boy, that he's probably been in Oklahoma a number of times. No, I don't think he's looking for work. He's from Oklahoma. He's an Oklahoma Indian. So I just turned around and I spoke in German to him. Here's one Indian that's looking for work. I don't know, he got to me just like that. His arms all around my neck and he's talking German to me. He said, let's go home, I'll put you to work. For somewhere along the road, I don't know how the word got might have been from that other boy there. On the other day, I had an Indian boy that could talk fluent German. He went over there and I clammed up. I won't say no more. <laughs> Remember this, uh, in our tribe, Cheyenne and Arapahoes, the facts proves that about 80% of people are on welfare. 
and there's a great percentage, over 65, maybe 80 percent, unemployed. Lack of experience, lack of skill. Now we're just going back trying to pick that up. We're in uh, either city areas or urban areas, nothing to do. If you don't get education, don't get skill, you're just unemployed. Without jobs, without future, the big cities offered big armfuls of nothing. People moved to the shadows like names said only once, and alcohol became a way of life. Half of all the Indian alcoholics in Oklahoma are Cheyenne and Arapaho. For years, the sickness was considered incurable, but now traditional leaders are providing a new hope Members of the Native American Church are working with alcoholics to provide a new link with their past. And on Saturday nights, their communion carries their messages to God while their hopes dangle on a strand of smoke. And it seems to be working. Even in the darkest winter, there is an invincible summer within. But the problem is not alcohol, nor is it jobs. Those are merely the symptoms. The real problem lies in what people see in each other. There used to be a lot of children come here after school, and I let them play and do whatever they want to. And uh, sometimes they'll sit down and they'll ask me something, you know. And they say, this teacher done this, call us names. And, well, why don't you tell him? You've got real names to tell him. <laughs> He's not kind of smiling. <laughs> I always try to, you know, give them advice or what is good towards uh, each other. And don't always act mean or wrong or steal or cheat. Although white men used to say Indian steal. I said, but we don't, not all of us are people. There's a lot of people in this world. Some is good and some is bad. You're educating our children to speak English and to learn the white man way. I said, I think it's time that you educate your children and also yourselves about the Indian ways. And nowadays, they're trying to teach the Indian how to be an Indian, trying to teach them their language again. When they stole it from them, got rid of it from them. I don't know what the what the people was thinking about at the time. Probably they knew. Maybe they wanted to do away with the Cheyennes or their, their uh, heritage or their language. And and now you, and now maybe they, they realize that the Cheyenne ways, I mean the Indian ways and the Indian language is fading, gradually fading, fading away. And they want they want these young people to carry on. Why are they so interested in, in this now? That's what I've often wondered. Are they learning anything from the Indian? Well, you ask me an old age question that's been trying to settle for even in Christ's time. He tried to solve that. He couldn't do it. Now, how can we as human beings solve that question? 
unless we have to get together and live together and associate with one another, quit thinking about the different race between the two races. And how can be that they have peace with one another when they do not understand one another? They cannot get together by mistrusting one another. But the old Indian culture and the American way of life are still miles apart. For most of us measure a man by what he has, the Indians by what he gives away. And when the Cheyenne and the Arapaho try to provide for their families, they often see a world where the ignorant and the weak are beaten by the powerful and many totally reject the society. For from their earliest times, their greatest leaders were those who spent their lives taking care of others, and their most honored citizens were often penniless at the end. Many still feel that being part of the community is more important than individual wealth. And that's why they stay where there are no jobs and no future. It will be a long, slow task to reweave understanding. It is hoped that tradition will be the thread for even among themselves, the Cheyenne and the Arapaho are splintered by a dozen factions. Each group, armed with the righteousness of its own point of view, builds walls of misunderstanding. Those who remember are reteaching the old ways in hopes that heritage will forge some common goals. And there has been a new awakening. Weekend hand games, a kind of button, button, who's got the button, now vie for crowds with local softball teams. The game is played with a pair of bones. One side hides them. Someone from the other side tries to find them. And if he can locate both at the same time, well, that's something, because the others do cause a minor distraction. This is the Plains Indians' way of totally relaxing. And it may go on for six or seven hours. At times like this, the Indian does not run by the clock. No one cares about the day. It is the moment that counts. But the hands of the clock still knock without entering. Years of white schooling broke the vital link to the past. We lost the Indian language. It's disappearing pretty fast. I mean, uh, it's very seldom that you see Indian kids that can't speak Cheyenne fluently or Arapaho fluently. The dropout rate for school kids in Cheyenne Arapaho country is nearly 90 percent. That's double the average for all other Oklahoma tribes. Many, faced with broken homes, turn to their grandmothers for help. I have to take care of all my grandchildren. They all come over here. Michael, look for All of them are my grandchildren. But 
I can't tell you, there's too many of them. There's <laughs> too many of them. <laughs> they all live down there, some live here. But I've got four here that gets money. I just got four grandchildren that help me to buy groceries. At a time when most other women have long since found their rocking chairs, Katie Osage still walks to town, and she does so nearly every day. The people in Canton, Oklahoma know her well, for she supports more than a dozen grandchildren. And each day she comes from her home near Longdale to buy groceries. I think that these younger element has the uh, ability to cope with a modern day life. But they hate to get started. They hate to make mistakes. And they hate to have someone make fun of them. Especially people that are against the Indian. That's the reason they're afraid to get anything moved. But now they're going to have to drop that and to tread the new way of life if they want to get anywhere in this world. plant that comes up in a good clean ground and here comes the weeds who's going to get better on one another the garden product or the weeds it's the same way with our lives today we have to get to know one another to understand one another to weed out all the bad things that we can think about one another. Hollywood movies have blurred the Plains Indians' past to the color of cheap china. But in Canton, Oklahoma, the setting sun dyes it red again. Children meet at Francis Russell's house to hear volumes yet unpublished and as yet not written down. And those who remember call it a beginning. One day there was an alligator and a white man. And this white man came to, to the aid of the alligator. And this alligator was laying on his back. And the alligator stopped the white man and he said, 
Please come help me. I can't get back on my feet. I want you to come and help me get back on my feet. I need help. I'm going to starve if I just lay here on my back. My Tony Fryer's son. 